Hello, everyone. So today I am going to share a little painting process with you because I am working on a painting. I guess that's uh, <laughs> pretty obvious with painting process, but I am working on a painting to be a part of a print series that I've actually been working on kind of for a few years. It originally was just a blueberry and strawberry print and sticker. And for a while, I've been wanting to add on to it, add some other sort of berry or fruit. And I'm finally getting around to it now, especially because I plan on opening my shop this summer. And I decided on blackberries, partially because I'm from the Northwest and we have a lot of blackberries around here. And also because I thought it would be a fun challenge. So one of the nice things about painting fruit or really just anything based in nature is that your lines don't need to be perfect. So I did start with a sketch that I had prepared beforehand, but I didn't feel like I had to go fully inside the lines. Now, normally if I were doing a traditional painting like this, I wouldn't use graphite, but I knew that later I'd be pulling this painting into Procreate and I could edit out any of those lines anyways. But I decided to start with a light pink wash and then slowly build my colors on top with watercolor. Now with the previous paintings, the blueberries and the strawberries, I think I started with watercolor and then added on a little bit of gouache and then further edited it in Procreate. But here I wanted to really let that watercolor shine through and then rather than gouache, use colored pencil. Now, I did use a tiny bit of gouache later on, but not nearly as much as I thought I might. In fact, I almost included the gouache in the supplies shots earlier on, but I um, ended up not really using it, which was really nice, honestly. But I really enjoy how soft this beginning part was. It was really enjoyable, and honestly, it's so refreshing that I was able to do this painting in one go. For a while now, I feel like I've had this curse where everything that I paint, I have to work at multiple times in a row. I have to do the sketch, do all the preparation, try it out, mess up and fail, and then re-sketch, re-get it all down on the correct paper, and then paint it again before I can get it right. So it was really nice that this went relatively smooth. I just feel like I don't get that very often when I'm making art, so it was really a win. However, I will say that I've gotten my preparation for paintings kind of down to a science at this point. And because I've done fruit paintings like this before, it definitely felt like it came a lot easier. But I also did a little test painting ahead of time. Um, a lot looser, a lot more of just like a practice study of blackberries. And because of that, I felt a lot more comfortable and a lot less nervous uh, going into this painting. And on top of that, I think I'm becoming a lot more comfortable filming myself. Now, I won't lie, sometimes it does bring me out of the experience a little bit, especially when I decide, oh, do I need to change shots? Is the camera in focus, is it not in focus? And I think I've gotten a little bit better with that. And I feel a lot more comfortable cutting out chunks of the painting process if it's getting a little repetitive or if it is just straight up out of focus. I really just want uh, the viewer to feel immersed in the painting experience and understand what I'm doing, but maybe not necessarily see every single part of the step, especially the stuff where it gets repetitive. Like for example, with these berries, each one had a very similar process, so I didn't feel like I needed to show every step of that. I do want to mention, since I don't think a lot of other artists always, I wouldn't say they're up, not upfront about it, but they just don't bother to mention, this footage is sped up. I know that seems obvious, but it is only sped up two times, which is actually a lot slower than normal because usually the painting processes take me a lot longer. So I'm trying to condense a lot more footage and it can get a lot more 
tricky to decide what to keep in, what to take out. And because this took me a lot less time, I only needed to condense it a little bit. So that felt really refreshing and nice. However, I will let you in on a secret. I actually did this painting over two days, cut up into little chunks because of my little friend known as tendonitis, kind of got to rest my joints. And so I decided not to overdo it, especially as you'll see later, um, took quite a bit of labor. So here is where the painting process stops because after this, I'm going to take a break, like I said, and then I'm going to go in with some lovely colored pencils. I recently got a mechanical pencil sharpener, so that really saved me with this because my pencils were breaking like crazy. Uh, I put a lot of pressure on them here, but I really love the look of colored pencil over watercolor. I've been doing this for a while now, and if you've seen any of my other painting process videos, you've probably seen me do this. And I definitely think I went a little ham here, but I still really like how it turned out. Now, I do think I probably could have let a little bit more of the watercolor underneath shine through, but I really wanted the control that the pencils gave me, and it's also a great way to add in some color variation and also tie the piece together color-wise. For example, later you're going to see me bring colors that I use in the berries, into the leaves, and into the flowers. I really like to have every color kind of pop up in each area, even if it's very lightly. I just think it helps bring the whole piece together and makes it feel a lot more cohesive. I definitely found the colored pencils to be really helpful here because I was working pretty small, about five by seven, and in uh, probably like a half inch, give or take on the sides. It is a lot harder to get in those details and plan ahead with the watercolor. And so being able to add in highlights and blend a little bit with the colored pencils is really helpful, especially for kind of some of the detailed parts of the berries. Now, did I rely on it a little too much? Maybe, but I also really enjoy this process, even if it does hurt quite bad. Uh, after a while, my hand definitely got sore. I unintentionally was probably pressing a bit too hard. Uh, you might even see me break the tip of a pencil a couple times because of how hard I was pressing. But the color payoff was definitely worth it. And I don't know, I just love colored pencils on watercolor. It's kind of my favorite thing. And maybe in the future I will use just watercolor by itself, but there's just something about the textures together that are just so nice that why would I just use one when I can use both? Especially for like more precise line work, the colored pencils are really nice. I could have definitely used a line art brush here, but I really needed the firmness of the pencils to feel a little more secure. And also I think it would have taken a lot longer, but at the same time, I also wanted it to be soft. And I feel like using fine liners, things like micron pens can be really nice, especially with certain art styles. But you, when you want to retain a softness, it can kind of bring a harsh element uh, that isn't necessarily wanted, or at least not that I wanted in this piece. So the colored pencil gave me a way to add a little bit more depth and control without taking away the softness of the watercolor.
Now here we're kind of getting to the finishing touches with the flower. I did later add just a tiny bit of white gouache to soften and brighten up the flower, but it was actually the only spot on the painting that I ended up using gouache on. And at this point, I was honestly pretty stoked. So here is how the painting turned out before any editing. And honestly, it barely even needed any. I just had to remove the background and clean up a little bit of the line work for the printing job. And I really love how it turned out. And it's nice to have not struggled with a piece for once. And here is the digitized version with the new background. This will be available as a print alongside the blueberries and strawberries very soon when my shop reopens. Please let me know if you have any questions down in the comments, and I would also love any feedback that you have. And with that, I will see you all next time. Bye everyone!